significant TV, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is a man that helps entrepreneurism happen. Why? Because he's connected with bringing events to Philadelphia. PHL Diversity. Philadelphia is more than a destination. It is a place to work, to live, to entertain, and to be engaged. Welcome, Greg DeShields, Executive Director of PHL Diversity. Thank you, Greg, it's my pleasure welcome. to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. PHL Diversity, we've got to start there. Right. What does that name mean? Well, it is an evolution. Mm -hmm. Most people would probably remember the original name, which was the Multicultural Affairs Congress. Absolutely. For about 26 years, it served as the engine that really positioned Philadelphia to be a number one destination for um, multicultural meetings and conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2013, we looked at a strategic analysis of our organization and felt that perhaps it was in our best interest to look at the evolving aspects of Philadelphia and quite frankly, the country. Yes. And as such, we realized that Philadelphia was more than just multiculturalism. Philadelphia was a very diverse city. So we evaluated the various business opportunities because the idea of any of the markets that we've always promoted had everything to do with business capability. And as such, women and LGBT appeared to be the way forward. Uh, but that really meant that we had to expand our definition to be considered more diverse and inclusive and that's how we ended up at PHL Diversity. Wonderful. PHL Diversity is in fact a division of the Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau. Correct, so the oh. Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau is the official marketing arm for the city of Philadelphia to bring in meetings and conventions. We also have an international division that addresses the issue of inbound travel from our seven different offices around the world. Our top three international destinations that have inbound traffic to Philadelphia are China, India, and Europe. Mm -hmm. So the Convention and Visitors Bureau's efforts are done in collaboration and quite frankly in most cases in tandem with the Pennsylvania Convention Center. So mm -hmm. we're the official marketing arm to raise the national and international awareness of the destination as a premier choice and then we partner with the Convention Center itself as the place where those meetings would take place. It's fabulous, and from an entrepreneurial perspective, to understand that there are organizations within organizations dedicated to bringing people to Philadelphia so that this is a place for meetings, conventions, and to do business Correct. is phenomenal. And there are a number of entrepreneurs who have actually been on this show, as well as other programs, um, who have benefited from the work that you've done. Correct. Can you talk a little bit about that, maybe not a specific entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. but how entrepreneurs plug into and can plug into the work that PHL right. Diversity does. Well, you know, I, I think it's important to say on the front end that the Convention and Visitors Bureau is a membership-based organization. Absolutely. Uh, and as a result of membership, you certainly get access to information about meetings and conventions that are going to take place in Philadelphia. You have access clearly to the Convention and Visitors Bureau to do business directly with us. And more importantly, you have business opportunities to do business with each other. Right. Um, those individuals who have an entrepreneurial focus and their businesses are really unique to Philadelphia add value to our position when we promote Philadelphia to businesses or conventions that are choosing us. The idea that they could probably get a very customized product that is very unique based upon the entrepreneur is a huge asset. In the case of my particular division, because it is diverse and it does have these specific segments, there is an interest for those members of the Bureau to position themselves based on the interest or the need to spend specific dollars from a group within mm. those communities in Philadelphia. You know, if I were to kind of, you know, recollect the conversation we had with the planner for the NAACP. She mm -hmm. said, we're bringing black dollars to Philadelphia and we want to make sure those black dollars go to Get black spent. businesses. Yes. So yeah. we actually held an event that allowed us to engage minority businesses 
with the planner to talk specifically about what their contracting and RP opportunities would be. And as such, it did yield six contracts. And it was a great opportunity, once again, for entrepreneurs to position themselves. And a Philadelphia spin, you know, it's a unique thing. If we have a group that's coming in from California, needless to say, they want Philly cheesesteaks or they want some great fried chicken. I mean, there are things that they look for that are very unique to Philadelphia. And our entrepreneurial committee or community provides a lot of that. It does, and you mentioned the membership. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the membership um, and what it can mean from <clears throat> the bureau standpoint as well as the entrepreneur standpoint. So the membership um, uh, investment certainly adds to our operating dollars as an organization. Um, the return as it relates to members is that they are listed in all directory information that we provide to planners. Planners who travel to Philadelphia have absolutely no idea who may have a product and service that would be a benefit to them. And they will always ask us specifically for some sort of directory or guide of uh, entrepreneurs or businesses that they could uh, engage with. We also have a convention services department who has a more intimate knowledge of those businesses and the, and the way that they have the ability to meet the needs of a customer. So that um, division tends to make a lot of direct recommendations. Um, in some cases because the business or the entrepreneur may have some sort of discount or you know, unique um, benefit that they make available to the customer. So that's the traditional business to business opportunity that we create. But we also engage our members when we're in the process of pursuing a customer. Oh. Uh, if we are pursuing a planner who really wants to have a very intimate connection with the city, and they visit us for a site where they want to look at hotels and the convention center, we may do a dinner and invite some of our members to be a part of that dinner. Uh, perhaps there's someone who has a great marketing um, business or there's someone who has a great limousine service. We will engage them as a part of entertaining that customer to give them a very comprehensive view to say, if you were to come to Philadelphia, these are the kind of businesses that you could do business with. So we find by not just sharing information about the conventions and the opportunities that are available for our entrepreneurs or our businesses, but engaging them in the process allows them to yield a better opportunity of success. Uh, but then moving forward, as we have groups that come in, we typically try to position an opportunity where the group can say, here are our contracting, here are our RFP opportunities, feel free to apply, and then they'll go through the typical bidding process. You know, you mentioned earlier that the NAACP had their convention here last year. And we talked earlier off, off set mm -hmm. about diversity and inclusion. Um, what are ways that diverse groups, women, um, religious groups, um, can be, I guess, encouraged um, to have their conventions here in the city. Well, I think it's the tone that was set by the mayor. You mm -hmm. know, the mayor, uh, upon moving into office, uh, created for the first time ever a chief diversity and inclusion officer with mm -hmm. Nolan Atkins, Jr., mm -hmm. who uh, has a very distinguished history with Dwayne Morris in terms of efforts around diversity and inclusion. And he also chaired the diversity and inclusion committee with the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, he will have a very broad-based effort to look at issues of economics, uh, he'll look at issues of supply diversity, he'll look at issues of community engagement and access, and then the broad-based efforts around how you bring diverse individuals, diverse thought together, and then include them in what the outcomes may be. So right now, that also includes millennials. It includes millennials, <laughs> and millennials are the future. And <laughs> right. uh, I think what's important, and certainly from the perspective of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, is engaging millennials uh, in everything that we do, because they really are setting the direction and, mm -hmm. quite frankly, the evolution of our industry and of our business opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, as we evolved from the Multicultural Affairs Congress to PHL diversity, it resonated with our millennials. Um, they certainly have the experience of being very diverse, and that can be from a cultural perspective, it can be from an ethnic perspective, but what we have found with millennials is that they give new perspective, new thought around some of the same old issues and same mm -hmm. old subjects. I think for me one of the exciting things about engaging millennials is how we have been able to embrace the world of social media. Mm -hmm. You know, 10 years ago if we had an event 
you know, we stuck them in envelopes and we put <laughs> stamps know. and we put them in the mail and we waited. <laughs> right. um, today, I think when we do communication, about 98% of it is all through digital social media activities. Mm -hmm. uh, our presence is primarily on Twitter, but we yes. certainly expand that with the Convention and Visitors Bureau through Facebook and LinkedIn. But just that example of loan, how millennials have really influenced the way that we as a marketing organization do communication shows how important they are and how having them a part of from a very diverse perspective giving different points of view and then from an inclusive perspective helping us um, make the changes necessary in order to move our organization forward. Greg we've been talking big picture and mm -hmm. now I want to get a little bit personal. Your background includes um, you know studying hospitality, leading up the hospitality group at uh, Temple University why diversity, why is diversity and inclusion so important to you? And what about your background just kind of made mm -hmm. you the right person for this position? Well, I tell everybody, I was on the board for this, this organization for 13 years mm -hmm. before I finally <laughs> had the opportunity to lead. Um, mm -hmm. But let me just step back and say, I'm a native Philadelphian. You know, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. I absolutely love this city. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were both alive and could see that I'm, you know, working in an organization that's the official marketing arm for Philadelphia. They'd both be thrilled because they were proud Philadelphians as well. Mm -hmm. I think the issue for me, and it was throughout the time that I was on the board, you know, understanding the work that we were doing, not that it was just a good thing, but that it was good business. And yes. at the end of the day, whenever you talk about, you know, diversity and inclusion, it is about what it does in terms of advancing our society, but that there are great business outcomes associated with it and kind of keeping those in check in mm -hmm. the way that you look at it um, reduces the possibility that there's no real value perception that people see in mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion. So over the years and realizing that the division has generated over $1.7 billion of economic Im impact on the city of Philadelphia and the fact that there are so many workers, whether they be taxi cab drivers, dishwashers, housekeepers, you know, all of these people have found the ability to pay mortgage, to pay gas bills, to put their kids through college uh, because of the fact that we've had such a vibrant industry and I think that as you engage in the uh, value from bringing in diverse meetings and conventions, you begin to see that this is a good thing to really be um, passionate about. And right. it's something that I understand and that as an African American, I can certainly appreciate it. So to that degree, I think uh, with the 13 years of study <laughs> on the board. <laughs> An investment. <laughs> An investment <laughs> right. that I can see that, you know, for me, it's a passion that I feel quite comfortable about. I will say, though, as a person who has any interest in the world of DNI, you have to have passion but you have to have patience mm -hmm. this is not work that's done overnight mm -hmm. it takes time it certainly is something that you have to realize that the success is more in the battles than the overall war so for me I kind of temper you know the passion that I have with a sense of realism in terms of what can be accomplished and what can be done well, Greg, the work that you're doing is truly significant. Thanks. Diversity and inclusion is at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. And it's really heartwarming that for Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, Absolutely. that inclusion and in diversity are part of what makes Philadelphia really strong. Yes. So thanks for being at the head of that effort and the collaborations that you're doing and bringing in fantastic conventions. Wonderful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Significant TV, significant entrepreneurs, significant individuals that are leading efforts that help make Philadelphia a diverse place to live, to work, to eat, to entertain, and to visit. Join Greg in being part of Philadelphia's present and future. Check out their website. Greg, the website, please. www.phldiversity.com. Excellent. And have a great evening. Thank you.